We're going to be preaching out of Matthew chapter 25, and I'm going to share verse 1 through 13. We're going to be looking at the parable of the ten virgins. Now, by the time I get done with this, you are going to understand this parable because I have sweated bullets weeks over this, preparing it because I believe that it is one of the parables that is so misunderstood. The parable of the ten virgins. Let's stand for the read of God's word, Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go you out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. I want to use for a subject this morning, don't ignore the wake-up calls. You may be seated. Don't ignore the wake-up calls. Now, I will explain some of this parable to you as we go along in the message. But I want to first say that these are not, these ten virgins are not, are not bridesmaids. They are ten virgins wanting to be part of the bride. They are speaking of the bride, not bridesmaids. In fact, the bridesmaids are already in heaven. They're awaiting the return of the bride or the event of the bride being taken home. So, well, who are the bridesmaids? Well, like John the Baptist, those that were led to Christ through John the Baptist and others that came to respond to Jesus before the cross. And those are bridesmaids. They are in heaven waiting the arrival of you and I. And when we arrive there, the bridesmaids will gather together a great possession procession, and we will go to the marriage of the Lamb. And there'll be a great reception up there with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the patriarchs, and we that have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And then in the future, we will return to planet Earth seven years later. In fact, it, it took seven days to two weeks to consummate a wedding in the Jewish wedding ceremony. It was, it would, the feast would last seven days, but many times there would be a two-week, three-week. They, they went all out. I'll tell you how, how all out they're going to go. The bride is going to have a 1,000-year honeymoon. It's called the millennial reign. And we will return from the reception to earth to have the marriage supper of the Lamb. And from there, we will rule and reign with Jesus Christ 1,000 years as a church. Now let me explain some things to you lest you misunderstand this parable. One thing we need to know right from the get-go is that a parable doesn't have to be explained in every little dot and crossing of every, uh, dotting every I and crossing every T. A parable is an, a, a overall truth 
that Jesus Christ is getting the cross. There are those that believe that their church, their name, above their door, they believe they are the bride. And if for some rare reason you get saved, if you're not part of the, their church, see, they're the bride. If for some rare reason you get saved, you're going to be a bridegroom. That is so far-fetched. It's so ridiculous. And they used to have a group of people, they're not so prominent now, but they used to be very prominent in the area when we first started the church, which was called the Bridesmaids. And they taught, and by the way, there are some churches that teach that they are the bride. And they are the only ones that's going to be the bride. Everybody else is just a guest or a bride, uh, bridesmaid. I want you to know that the bridesmaids are already in heaven. They've already been selected before the cross of Calvary. And they await our arrival on the shores of heaven for that great marriage. Jesus Christ is calling out a church, a bride unto himself now. And these ten virgins are five wise and five foolish, half and half. Nobody wants half and half of anything. I want it all or nothing. Hello. What if I put half gas in your tank and half water? Wouldn't work. Amen. But Jesus Christ said there was five wise virgins and five foolish. Now we need to understand that because they were virgins, it meant they were spiritually clean or physically clean if you want to look at that. But most people understand that when you give your heart to Christ, you are to be spiritually clean. Everybody in this room, if you're going to draw nigh to God, you're going to wash your hands. You're going to be spiritually clean. Everybody that wants to go to heaven knows that they have to be clean. And these ten virgins knew that they needed to be clean to meet the bridegroom. But five of them was only surface clean. The foolish, but the wise were fully clean inside and out by the blood of Jesus Christ. The five foolish did not have eternal life pulsating in their soul. Let's look at this and let's, let's lay hold of this in a very unique way today. Wake up calls. Now notice the Bible says that there were ten virgins, meaning that the kingdom of God is like people wanting to go to heaven. But not everybody's going to go to heaven. Only the wise are going to heaven. The foolish will not make it, at least for the wedding of the bride. And the Bible says that, there was a, that they took with them. The, the scripture says in verse 1, Ten virgins took with them lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Did you know the lamps is none other than the Bible? The lamps is the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Amen? You say, prove that to me, preacher. All right, Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so they went forth with their lamps, their Bibles. Christendom, people, not everybody that carries a Bible carries Jesus in their heart. Not everybody that carries a Bible prepares to go where they want to go to heaven is going to make it because you've got to do more than just carry a Bible. You've got to carry Jesus inside your life, in your heart. You've got to have oil in your vessel. Amen. And I want you to understand that sometimes plain vanilla can be complicated, but this is really not complicated when you look at it. Let me, let me show you in verse, verse 1 says, Lamps, which would be the Bible, that go forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. The, the, the foolish took their lamps, their Bible, took their word, went forth socially to get ready to meet the Lord. But notice verse 3, it says, No oil with them. They took no oil. Everybody say, No oil. All is a picture of the Holy Spirit. All is a picture of the indwelling presence of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in your life. 
But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Hello. I've got a Bible. I'm carrying it. It's a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. I memorize it. It's in my heart. I love the Word of God. But I got more than that. I got the Holy Spirit oozing through my life, the oil of the Holy Spirit of God, for I am a vessel of God. We are vessels. I said we are vessels. We need to understand that Romans chapter 9, verse 21 says we are vessels. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels, the Word of God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 says, What know you not? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Your vessel is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So we need to understand that it takes more than a Bible in hand. It takes a Jesus in heart, the Spirit of God. And the foolish took their lamps, their Bible, but took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels, and their vessel is your body, our life. We are a vessel of the Lord. And God chooses to put the Word in our vessel, the light in our vessel, and the oil in our vessel. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, But we have, but, but we have this treasure in earthen vessel." that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Inside of us, God has put his light, his word, and his spirit because we are vessels of the oil of gladness, vessels of the eternal life, vessels of God. And until you get God in your vessel, you're not going to heaven. God must be in your vessel. That means in your life, in your your body and your existence. God must be inside of you. Notice it says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slept and slumbered. Kind of a history of the church. The church has kind of got lazy over the centuries. The church has got lazy, slept and slumbered because it was taking a long time for the Lord to return. In fact, it's took, it has taken over 2,000 years already. And people begin to lollygag around. You say, what is lollygagging around? That means you're missing church and do whatever you want and got other things to do. You're lollygagging around. How many know what lollygag means? Well, if you don't know after service, I'll help your poor soul in the foyer. We'll talk about it. That lady out in Nevada, I said, you're pulling my leg. She jumped back and said, I'd never touch your leg. And I had to explain to her that I wasn't wanting her to touch my leg. I just said that you're pulling my leg. And she still didn't get it. Sometimes them Westerners don't get it. Amen. Come on. The Bible says at midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. And I want you to know that there are calls right now. Calling people to get right with God. Wake up calls. I said wake up calls. Don't miss out on the wake up calls. There are wake up calls personally. There are wake up calls nationally. There are wake up calls worldwide. We are living in a day that there's a wake up call personally. Amen. A few weeks back, my good friend Chuck, our good friend Chuck, drops dead right here. I should say drops alive right here. He goes to be with Jesus. He dies right here in church. Massive heart attack, gone. We know that Susie Bender's husband, massive heart attack, gone. We don't know. There's personal, personal um, things, and we need to pay attention to the personal wake-up calls. Health scares. Health scares. Death of a loved one. It's almost like we close our eyes to truth. And the truth is, none of us are going to be here forever. And we need to be ready. And, and, and what's really shocking is, not only could we be here today and gone tomorrow and go by the grave, die, we could be here and gone tomorrow by rapture into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We're not staying on this earth. We're leaving. We're going to be caught up to meet Jesus in the air. And the, and the sound has went forward. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. It has just been recent that the preaching has been loud and boisterous about Jesus Christ is coming soon. The pulpits are aflame with the fire and the excitement that Jesus could come any moment to come and get his church. And we need to pay attention to the wake-up calls. Amen? Pay attention to the wake-up calls. We need to pay attention to what's happening nationally. This, this uh, COVID-19 took out millions of people. People with health issues died because they couldn't handle the COVID-19. I lost a brother in that. Many of you have lost loved ones with this COVID-19. Diseases and pestilence. And then we have politicians and leaders that doesn't understand the economy and how Serious our time is nationally. Just uh, a while, well, many years ago now, uh, September to, uh, 1, 2011, wasn't it? I think it was. The, what year was it? 2001. Yeah, 9-11, 2001. Something like that. Well, I was alive then. I did see it. I mean, I wasn't there, but I've seen, I seen the coverage on it. There, there's a lot going on in the world today, a lot, of, a lot of problems. The Middle East is about to explode. We're about to see nuclear bombs go off. We should not. We need to pay attention. We need to pay attention to our surroundings. We need to pay attention to the, the graveyards. We need to pay attention to the sicknesses and, and diseases. We need to pay attention to the economy. Pay attention to how bad things are coming and how things are crumbling around us, all around us. You need to pay attention that the Lord's coming very soon. And when he comes, we need to make sure that our vessels are full of oil. We need to make sure that Jesus Christ has pulsated in our lives. Worldwide, there's a threat of nuclear war. Worldwide, there's a threat of a World War III. Worldwide, there's starvation and death, pestilence and diseases. We need to pay attention. We're in the last days. We need to pay attention. This thing could be wrapped up very quickly. We need to pay attention that the Lord could come at any moment to catch the five wise virgins up to meet him in the air. And there'll be a wedding in the air with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm going to point out some things t today that maybe some of you haven't noticed. But I, I, we need to pay attention to the fact that right now there's a strong delusion in our land. How many of you agree? I, I don't know what you call it, a strong delusion or st strong um, insanity, something. People believe things. They believe crazy things. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2.11, I'll read it to you, 2.11, 2 Thessalonians 2.11. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And we know that the strong delusion comes with the Antichrist. We can come back to that to later, but some people say the strong delusion comes. Um, God will see to it that you're not saved if you miss the catching away of the church. That's not what the Bible teaches at all. The Bible teaches that when the Antichrist comes, God will send a strong delusion that the world will, will receive a lie, that they will listen to the Antichrist. you find that in the second chapter of 2 Thessalonians. But we're just getting prepped. The world's getting prepped for that strong delusion to believe a lie. And that's why we need to preach and preach hard and preach the Bible and preach the truth line upon line, precept upon precept, doctrine, the Word of God, and let people know where we stand because there is a strong delusion in the light, in the world. Uh, uh, that strong delusion is even trying to penetrate the church, but I rebuke that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ with the Word of God. No strong delusions coming into this house. We're going to take the strong Word of God and the Spirit of God and stand for truth in these last days. So these five foolish virgins, they had no oil. No oil. 
They had no oil. I want to point out some things. It's important that you see this because we're living in a day that we've got to keep our reservoir full of oil. We've, we must keep ourselves trimmed and burning brightly for Jesus Christ. The sound is going out. The bridegroom cometh. As I said earlier, preaching through the book of Matthew chapter 24, that the rapture is not a secret rapture. It's not going to be something that happens and no one knows. Poof, you're gone. Where'd they go? The whole world's going to know what happened. The whole world's going to know it's not a secret rapture. It's not an invisible rapture. We're going to be caught up to meet Jesus Christ in the air as the bride of Christ. And the safest place for you to be if you miss the catching away of the church, the safest place for you to be is in the church of Jesus Christ. Because the strong delusion will follow the Antichrist and there'll be a massive amount of people saved after the rapture of the church. There'll be millions of people come to Christ after the rapture of the church. But as the Antichrist rises up in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the strong delusion will come. The whole world will bow down before the beast and for the Antichrist and the false prophet. And there'll be many millions of people saved during the great tribulation. But as a whole, the world will lay in the lap of the wicked one. And they'll, your, your chances of being saved after the catching away of the church fall very slim if you wait too long. Because the great tribulation will come like an avalanche and everything's going to be done in seven years. That's why he says, I come quickly, come quickly. Suddenly I come. It may surprise you, but it doesn't say that these five foolish virgins went to hell. It does not say that. I've read it several times. I've heard preachers preach they went to hell. I read it and read it. It's not there. It does not say the five foolish went to hell. It says when the bridegroom came, the five foolish said to the, to the wise, give us of your oil. The wise said, I can't save you. We can't give you what we got. Uh, 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 the world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. Jesus Christ saved me. I can't do for you. I can't save you. I can't do for you what God has done for me. You've got to go for yourself. You've got to bow before Jesus Christ yourself. You've got to cry out to God yourself. You've got to repent of your sins yourself. You've got to give your life to Christ. You've got to go get for yourselves, call upon the name of the Jesus Christ and let Jesus Christ come into your heart. And, and while they went to get right with God, while they went to get oil in their vessels, the Bible doesn't say that they didn't find oil. The Bible says they returned. And they would not have returned if they hadn't found some oil. They returned because they found some oil. Let me explain this to you. The five wise are ready to go. Man, we're going to, boom, we're out of here. Those that's lollygagging around don't really have Christ pulsating in their life. They're not really full of the oil of the Holy Spirit. Their bodies are not the temple of the Holy Ghost. They have no oil in their vessel, no oil in their lamp. They get up, they hear the sound, they, they know they need to do something. They go to church, but they really don't have what they need to be cut up off the planet. They go to church, they carry their Bible, but they don't have enough unction of the Holy Ghost to take them up off the planet into the presence of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ comes, he's going to rapture his church out and everybody that's lollygagging around that's not got Christ in their heart will be left behind. And those that are left behind can go and find Salvation. Those that are left behind can go get right with God. I believe the five foolish did go get right with God. But when they returned, Jesus Christ said, the door shut. The door shut. I, I don't know you. It doesn't mean he doesn't know. God knows, God knows everything. God knows everything your blood pressure right now. God knows how many number of hairs are on your head. God knows everything. So when Jesus Christ said, I don't know you, it doesn't mean he didn't know their existence. It means I don't know you as my bride. I don't know you as my bride. 
I'm not opening the door because I don't know you as my bride. Too late, you'll not be part of the bride of Jesus Christ. You will be a great tribulation saint. I don't want to be a great tribulation saint. I want to be a born-again, blood-washed, caught up in the air to meet Jesus Christ, bride of Jesus Christ. I want to be a child of God, part of the church of Jesus Christ. But everybody that's left behind will never be part of the church. And they'll never be part of the reception of the wedding. They may be a part of the marriage supper of the Lamb later on in the millennium era, but they'll never be part of the festivities of the wedding. They'll never be part because they'll be left here. And while they're left here, if you're left here, you may get right with God, but you're still going to be left here and you're not going to be part of the church of Jesus Christ and you're not going to be part of the wedding or the reception because the bridesmaids have already went there waiting our arrival. Now, someone said, well, I believe this 10 virgins is at the end of the great tribulation. Come on, give me a break. How could these 10 virgins be at the end of the great tribulation? I can't picture anybody sleeping and slumbering. When hailstones, 100 to 150 pounds, are coming out of the sky, the earth is crawling with earthquakes, there's pestilence and diseases, there's locusts, Stinging men, they suffer for nine months at a time and cannot die. Burning, a third of the planet dying. You tell me you're going to lay down and take a nap. And not just take a nap, slumber. People are not going to be slumbering in the Great Tribulation. I believe you're going to look at a lot of people that are sleepless in the Great Tribulation. So this has to be something that, like a clap of thunder, sudden, we're caught up to meet Jesus in the air. Suddenly you're left behind, but you can turn to Jesus Christ and he will save you and give you eternal life. Uh, as Jimmy Harris says, I believe this is the grandma revival. Could be. Some people left behind. You say, well, I'll just wait and get saved, give my heart to Jesus Christ. When the rapture takes place, I'll give my heart to Jesus Christ afterward. Well, you're, it's going to cost you so much. You're not going to be part of the church. You're not going to be part of the bride. You're not going to be in heaven. You're going to have to go through the great tribulation. More than likely, you'll be killed during the great tribulation. You'll get diseased and die. You say, well, I believe God protects all of his children during the great tribulation. Only the 144,000 are sealed with the security and the safety of God and the two witnesses. And even then, the two witnesses, when God got through, with them, zip, they're zapped, they're dead. They lay in the streets for three days and three nights and raise again from the dead and caught up to meet Jesus, caught up to meet God in the air, taken off the planet. I want you to know that the price is heavy to miss the catching away of the church. The price is heavy, a cost that you don't want to go through. It's a horrific time and you'll, you'll wood to God and beg God that he'd give you another chance, and he will give you a chance. God will save people through the whole great tribulation. There'll be some that won't be saved during the great tribulation that God has convicted, God has dealt with, God has, uh, has ministered them, convicted them. Even now as I'm speaking, God has convicted people, and there'll be some of them people that God won't draw again. They'll be doomed forever. But many people, will ref they'll fill the church. People will come in, call out to God, but they'll miss being part of the bride. You read the ten virgins, and you will not find they went to hell. You'll find they returned with what they went for. They wouldn't have returned if they had not found the oil. And Jesus Christ said, too late, too late, too late. I don't know you as my bride. And they will be Great Tribulation Saints. I want to point out some things and hope you understand what I'm trying to get across. You say, Preacher, you're making it too easy. I didn't make it easy. There's nothing easy about this. This is hard stuff. The Bible says, no, the foolish had no oil. Everybody say no oil. No oil in the vessel. How are you going to say they had oil when it says they had no oil? It doesn't say they had oil in their lamps. But it says that 
they said their lamps had gone out. You can light a lamp and it not have oil in it. It won't burn long, but you can light one. The truth is, the wise are born again children of God awaiting the catching away of the church. I want you to see something in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Are you following me? You seeing what? Are you learning? I hope you're learning. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, this is verse 1. Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and by our getting together unto him. That's rapture, church going up. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, by the word, by word or by letter, as from us, meaning someone sent a letter in Paul's name or from St. Luke's name, uh, and it was a letter, counterfeit letter, that as the day of Christ is at hand. In other words, you're in the middle of the tribulation. You're, you're, you missed it. You missed the catching away of the church. You're caught up in the day of the Lord. But the day of Christ is at hand. It says, let no man deceive you by any means for that day. What day? Shall not come except there come a falling away. Many people believe that falling away means rapture. Nonetheless, I think we're seeing a falling away now. First, the falling away first, that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. There are those that argue the fact, well, the church has got to reveal the Antichrist. Really? Come on. The church is not commissioned to, to, to um, introduce the Antichrist. The church is commissioned to introduce the living Christ, the true Christ. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior. I'm not looking for him to come, the Antichrist. I'm looking for the true Christ, my Savior, to come. And when he comes, I'm going to be caught up. The Bible says, whoso... Oppose it. This is the son of perdition there in verse 3. The devil is called the son of perdition. That the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Whoso who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called of God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitting in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, with Thessalonica, I told you these things. Paul must have believed in the abomination of desolation or well, he wouldn't have mentioned this and now you know that what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery something withholds that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity doeth already work only who who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way did you know for the most part the church the church is hated by the world did you know that? Oh, I, we feel love here. We feel love among brothers. And in the, in the, in the uh, Bible Belt, we feel kind of love. But you get out in the outskirts of major cities, and you're going to discover that the church is not, a, it's not love. The church is hated. The Bible says, The mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. That is the church. The church is will take, be taken out of the way, and boy, will they be glad when, we, when we're gone. The church will be taken out of the way. The mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now let it will let until, be, until he be taken out of the way. Someone said, well, that's the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit's going to be here in the Great Tribulation, according to Acts chapter 2, the preaching of Peter concerning the prophet Joel. So the Holy Spirit will be here. We're going to be caught up. The church will be vacate the planet. We'll be gone. And when the church is taken up, we, we're, we're that restraining power. He said, but the Bible teaches that we are a sheath. Verse 7 says, only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way. Well, the church is referred to as a she in its relationship and its love with, for Christ. But the church is also referred to as a he in its warrior soldier. According to Ephesians chapter 6, the church is a he or a she. In fact, it's neither one. But when it comes to battling and the armor, it's, it's called a he. 
And so the church will be taken up. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him who is coming after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong illusion that they will believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Let me go on and say again, the strong delusion comes with the Antichrist. The strong delusion will come when the Antichrist is revealed and God will send a strong delusion in which they will be damned forever. But until then, if we're caught up to meet Jesus in the air, we're safe, we're home, safe, amen. The umpire of heaven will go, safe! We'll be home plate, safe. We'll dust off all the world's things and we'll go to the wedding as the bride of Christ, as five wise virgins. The foolish, some of them will be saved. Some of them will come back with oil. Some of them will return and say, my God, I'm wrong. And they will be saved. And they'll be great tribulation saints. And they, they will go to heaven, but they won't be part of the bride because Jesus Christ said, I never knew you. Many of them will go to hell because they don't get Christ in their heart. Many of them will die of the pestilence and the, the wars and the famines and the diseases on the earth during the great tribulation. A lot of people are going to die that missed the rapture that believed in God, but they're going to die of diseases and, and death and pestilence and all kinds of things. But those that are that will come to God and get oil in their vessels, that will come and allow Christ to save their soul, fill the church with repentant souls, calling out to God, yes, they'll miss the bride. Yes, they'll miss the great reception in heaven. Yes, they won't be part of the church, but they will be saved by the skin of their teeth. And they will suffer great problems. Make your decision. Pay attention, health scares. Pay attention, death of a loved one. Pay attention, graveyards. Pay attention, sickness and disease. If you're sitting in this room right now and you don't have the air that you need to breathe, pay attention. If you're sitting in this room right now and you're on heart medicine, pay attention. You're sitting in this room and your health is not as strong as it ought to be. Pay attention. You're here in this room. You have health scares. Maybe you've had a heart attack. Maybe you've got diabetes. Maybe you've got arthritic pains. Maybe you've got uh, problems in your life. Listen to me. Pay attention. Don't ignore the wake-up calls. God is trying to wake you up. Amen. These 10 virgins were... They are bride wannabes. They want to be part of the bride. These are people that are heaven seekers. They're kingdom seekers. They're wanting Christ to come into their life. But only five with the wise that allow the Spirit of God to come in their life will get to go to heaven. And there are so many people that's going to miss the catching way of the church. And many of them are going to lose their soul because they've been not paying attention to the wake-up calls. When you drive past a cemetery... That's a wake-up call. My good friend fell dead here in the church. Many of you were here. That's a wake-up call. When the doctor says, you've got cancer, and there's no cure for it, but we'll treat it, that's a wake-up call. When you're here, and you see people, and you see the world going like it's going, that's a wake-up call. Judy and I have noticed, uh, Judy and I, can you believe it? Judy and I are 70 years old. Now, I look at Judy doesn't. Judy looks much younger than I do. But we're 70 years old. I know I'm getting old because I read the obituaries. And I've noticed so many people die in the age of 50 to 60. A great percentage of people die in their 60s. If you live to, three, live to be three score and ten, God has blessed you, and he said he'll give you three score and ten. But if you make it another ten by reason of strength, 
It's because it'll be time it'll be times of adversity. Amen. Well, I'd like to live another 20 years with a little adversity. Wouldn't mind being 90 years old. Want Judy to come along. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Want Judy to come along. Because I've got to have somebody take care of me. She's got to come along. But we have wake-up calls, uh, personal wake-up calls, national wake-up calls, worldwide chaos everywhere, political disarray, insanity everywhere, delusion everywhere. This is all wake-up calls. Israel's about to explode in a, a massive war, wake-up calls. Shootings in our school, wake-up calls. So, well, we got to get rid of all the guns. Listen to me, listen to me. There's a guy in Great Britain that took a knife and killed a lot of people. What are we going to do, get rid of all the knives? It's not the gun that kills, it's an idiot that's holding it. So they say, what are we going to do about the schools? They, they, they get in school and kill people. We're going to put armed guards at the door. We're going to secure the schools. Listen, we ought to secure the schools as, as, as though World War III has come to the public schools. We need to, we need to fight. We need to, need to battle for our children. Amen. And the remedy is not getting rid of guns. The remedy is having the right people in place to guard our schools. Amen. We ought to guard our schools as much as we guard banks or Fort Worth or the White House or anywhere. Our children are more important than the president. Our children are more important than the White House. The children, our children are more important than the, the halls of Congress, the Senate. Our children are more important than the government. Our children are more important than the politician, whether it be Trump or that lady that I cannot make sense of. I cannot make sense of that woman. Every time I listen to her, it looks like there's a... 15,000 railroad tracks going different directions. But don't be surprised what happens in November. This world is wicked. This world is evil. Wake up calls. Make your decision visible. Come to Christ. Make your decision visible. We want to know where you go if you were to fall dead. We want to know, and you want to know, that you're ready to go to heaven. Make your de decision visible. Stay full of oil. Here's a scripture that's not brought up much in the second coming of Jesus Christ or the rapture of the church. This is a verse that is so powerful. 1 John chapter 2, verse 28. 1 John chapter 2, verse 28. And now, and now, we'll conclude this sermon with this. And now, little children, abide in him, Christ, that when he shall appear, rapture, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people caught up in the, to meet the Lord in the air. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to make heaven their home, going to be raptured up to meet Jesus. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to go and be with Jesus that's not as dedicated and consecrated for Christ as they should be, but they are born again. There's going to be a lot of people be caught up to meet Jesus in the air, but when they, when they are caught up to meet Jesus in the air, they're going to be scared, and they're going to be ashamed. They're going to be scared and they're going to be ashamed. Well, when I get caught up to meet Jesus in the air, I don't mind being scared. But I don't want to be ashamed. I don't mind being startled at the rapture. I don't mind being startled if we're caught up to meet Jesus. I don't mind that. But I mind being ashamed. I don't want... To go meet Jesus ashamed. 
Look at that verse. And now little children abide in him, abide in Jesus, that when he shall appear, that's the catching way of the church, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Are you going to be ashamed? If Jesus came right now, yeah, I, I know I'd go to heaven. I know that I'd be caught up. I know there's oil in my vessel. I know that I'm saved. But are you going to be ashamed because you're not full? You're not committed to the Lord. Are you going to be ashamed? I don't want to be ashamed. When I meet Jesus, I want to be full. Full of oil, full of praise, full of worship, full of faithfulness. I don't want to be ashamed. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to be left behind at the rapture, and they're not going to be ashamed. They're going to be absolutely furious because they thought they were ready, and they're not. So my call is a wake-up call. Are you ready? I just explained the ten virgins to you as it's laid out. Watch. Watch, be ready. You know not what hour the Lord does come. Watch and be ready. I just shared with you the truth. The truth of the ten virgins. There is no such thing as a church that is the bride and everybody else is bridesmaid. That's no such thing. The church is the bride, but the bridesmaids are already in heaven waiting for our arrival. You need to remember that. I listened to a whole sermon this week about a guy... He spent the whole sermon teaching that the ten virgins were bridesmaids. At the end of his sermon, he was teaching the Lord would come with his bride, and he'd begin to gather up all the bridesmaids to get, take them, and some of them would be ready and some of them would be left behind. I'm thinking, when, when's this going to happen? In the Great Tribulation? I don't think so. When's this going to happen? Well, it happened between... Before Jesus died on the cross, that's where the gathering of the bridesmaids was. As John, the Baptist, and he got it all prepared. That was the gathering of the bridesmaids. And the guest, the Old Testament guest, the, the, the bridesmaid guest before the crucifixion of Jesus. After the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's no longer bridesmaids, no longer guests. It is the bride. And then after the bride is caught up, the great tribulation saints, they will be guests at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Those that get right with God, they'll be guests at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the Jews will be guests at the marriage supper of the Lamb. The nation of Israel will be guests. Don't you know that's going to get their goat? How many would agree that that's going to get the Jews' goat? Israel, that's going to get their goat. When, when Israel has to sit down at the table and honor the church of Jesus Christ, that's going to get their goat. Amen? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will be at that table. Amen? Won't it be wonderful to sit at that table and look across the table and see Mephibosheth? I look across the table and say, well, there's old Nebuchadnezzar. He got right with God on the end, became a preacher of righteousness. Look across the table and there's Peter playing with his food. <laughs> Abraham sitting at the table. Isaac and Jacob sitting at the table. And all eyes are on the bride. Wow. And Jesus will say to the Jews, you had your chance. You missed it. Israel will be saved as a nation. Stand with me. We give an invitation. I hope, I hope this helped you understand the ten virgins a little better. Because you will meet people out there that will teach that their church is the bride and everybody else is bridesmaids. That's not true. There is no bridesmaids on earth today. They're all in heaven awaiting the arrival of the bride. The ten virgins are those that want to go be with the Lord. My question to you is, we're going to give an invitation. It's still early. It's not even 12 yet. It's still early. My question to you is this. If Jesus came right now, if he came right now, 
sudden, would you be caught up to meet the Lord in the air? Or would you be left behind? Or you may be standing or sitting in this room and say, well, I think I'd be caught up, but I've not been committed like I should. I think I would be ashamed. I want to invite you to come. If you need to be saved, come and be saved. If you need to clean up your life so you're no longer ashamed, prepare. Don't ignore the warning. Don't ignore the calls. Don't ignore the close calls. Don't ignore those calls that Jesus Christ brings. Don't ignore them. Don't ignore the calls. Jesus is calling. Don't ignore it. We're about to go home, church. And everybody in this room needs to make sure that you're ready. That you're ready. If you're not saved, come and be saved. If you think you'd be ashamed, you think you'd go, but you'd be ashamed, Come and clean up your life. We are on the verge of the return of Christ. And five were wise and five were foolish. You may be a clean living person. You may be a good mother or a good father. You may be in, in a spiritual sense a virgin. As far as spiritually thinking, serving the Lord. But that's not enough. You've got to have Christ inside of you. You've got to have that Holy Spirit in you. As they play and sing, altars open, come on.